All right, here is the next project. This is a Pilot 3-inch TV set. And it is, uh, it has good news and bad news associated with it. Okay. The, it's missing some parts, so there's going to be a little bit more. The front bezel there is missing, so that's going to have to be remade. Uh, but we do have the cover. That That is one thing that if it's missing, well, you got a job ahead of you to make that. And the, the front uh, front bezel for that is, for the uh, two is there. Now, the good news on this is that somebody's been at it, and they have already, they've already recapped it. And um, they've re replaced a few resistors and stuff like that in there. Uh, but the bad news is that after they got finished, it's absolutely dead. It does nothing. So they, they, they goofed up. Now, in some ways, that is a lot worse than getting one that's absolutely um, original. If you got it original, then if you're competent, you can do a good job and not mess up. But if you got somebody that's a little shaky at replacing caps, it's pretty easy to get one out of there and put it in the wrong place to get it to get it back together. And that's possibly what's happened here. Few of them here and there in the wrong place. Okay, now uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through and show the procedure that I use for troubleshooting one of these sets and um, that way you, you'll be able to follow this general procedure and be able to do what I've done and have a pretty good chance of getting the set a, a set working whether it be this type of set or whether it be one of the older um, uh, the older seven inch sets or um, or even some of the newer ones um, after I get through with this one I will do a newer set, one that's from the 50s, that uses the standard, um, the big power transformer and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this particular set is a line operated set. It has no power transformer. It's all series string and uh, chassis is hot, whole nine yards. So um, it, it's uh, a little bit different in servicing than one that has a power transformer. Uh, the one with a power transformer, you can have 450 volts in. Whereas this one here, the maximum voltage is, uh, is about um, oh, 140 volts plus and minus. They have a plus supply and a minus supply, and there's half wave rectifiers off the line. So they'll be around 130 to 140 volts maximum. Um, they may even be le less than that once the set's warmed up and going. Okay, now I've got a, a schematic for it. Uh, Schematics for just about any TV are available online, and um, I pulled this one offline, and um, uh, this gives a, a pretty good, um, a pretty good, uh, I mean, it's actually, the resolution is some of the better resolutions of a, a uh, writer's. Okay, the block diagram, we got main rectifier power supply, and then we have high voltage generator, picture tube, the vertical deflection, horizontal deflection, sync separator, audio section, video section, and the tuner. So what we are going to do, we'll start off with the basic power supply and get that working. We want to have our plus and minus 150 volts um, generated in, this, in, the, in the set. Okay, then once that's working, we'll go ahead and work on the high voltage section and get that putting out the high voltage for the picture tube. Okay, once we get that done, we'll work on the um, deflection circuits to get the two um, waveforms that sweep the, sweep the picture, uh, uh, the beam on the picture tube. Okay, and then once we get that done, we'll have a raster. The picture tube will be lit up and um, we'll have a raster and we'll see if we can get a signal through the tuner. And um, and once we're at that point, then we're going to you know start adjusting things and see if we can get everything tuned in. Now to test the set, I've got a color bar generator, and I also have a, a set converter that converts the HDTV 
to standard um, channel 3, channel 4 output, which will go into this thing and, and drive it with a, with a TV signal. So we'll be able to actually see TV on the screen once we um, get to the point where we have a signal getting through it. All right, first thing we're going to do, we want to see if our filter capacitors are any good. Okay, this thing has got... big filter capacitor here. Okay, there's another one down underneath. There's two different ones that are these electrolytics. We want to see if those are any good because uh, I can't tell whether the person that did this replaced those or not. Now, to test those, we're going to apply voltage to the set without turning the filaments on. We do not want the filaments to light up. We're going to use a separate power supply and apply 150 volts onto the um, filter capacitors. Without the tubes lit up, there's nothing in here that pulls current. There, there may be a few places where there's voltage dividers to ground, which might have a few um, milliamps here and there, but by far and away, uh, we're, we're not going to have but just a few milliamps of current uh, without the tubes lit up. Now once the tubes light up, then we're going to probably have 100 milliamps of current. Um, it can't be much more than that because the 35W4 and the 25Z5 are not going to carry that much more. Um, okay, to do that we'll get us a power supply and we'll connect it on there and we'll see if we can um, apply 150 volts onto these filter capacitors and have a low enough uh, leakage to where they're not going to heat up. There are two things about filter capacitors that you have to worry about. The first is leakage. Leakage will make it to where the filter capacitor will heat up and potentially short out. The second thing you have to worry about is the actual capacitance itself. The capacitor can have no leakage at all, very, you know, very little leakage, and still have too little capacitance. If it's rated at, let's say, these are 80 microfarads and 100 microfarads and a 40 microfarads and 100 microfarads. So if, if it's supposed to have 100 microfarads and it's only got 20 microfarads because it's dried out inside, uh, you're going to have so much ripple on the uh, B plus that the set won't work at all. It, it'll just have black bars across the screen. So we have to make sure that not only do we have the capacitors um, not leaking, but they also have to have enough capacitance to where when we're running the set, the ripple is minimal. It, it should have only oh, maybe three or four volts of ripple maximum on the, uh, on the uh, B+. Okay, this one goes from zero to um, 250 volts. That'll work fine. All right, so what I'm going to do is, uh, okay, I'm turn this on here. Okay, one of the condensers is down on the bottom. Okay, the negative is right here. And the positive is right here. Okay. All right. Okay, there's 150 volts. And... We're reading no current at all, so this one looks like it's in good shape. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's got capacitance because it's holding. It is holding. Okay, so if I get in here, it probably make a good bang. Yeah. Okay. Now, the other one, the ground goes to the chassis. All right. And we've got two sections here. I'm going to put one right here. All right. Let's see what we get. Okay. 100. It's 100 volts. Okay, we're getting 20 milliamps and it's climbing a little bit. Okay, that's 100, 150 volts.
Okay, the current is going down. Okay. It's down below 10 milliamps. So that's that capacitor is going to be okay. All right, I'm going to move over to the other section here. Okay, that one's low already. Okay, it's going down. Okay, so it looks like our filter capacitors don't have excessive leakage. All right, I suspect they have been replaced because they have nuts and screws on the on the um, mountings. You know, they're not riveted. But there are other things in here that have nuts and screws. I don't know if they were replaced by this guy or not. Um, it's possible. Some of the tube sockets are put in with nuts and screws and others are riveted. So, eh, who knows what he did? Who knows? The, it's, it's just uh, not possible to tell. If you don't make a test like this on your, your filter capacitors, you can burn out your rectifier tubes if you just plug it in and turn it on. Some people will go ahead and use a variac on the input. They'll put, but, but you don't have any way with a variac to measure the current going through the capacitor. Um, you can go by the line current and kind of, you know, do some mathematics to figure out what it should be, but it's better to just use an external power supply and be able to measure the current directly, because you don't want to have a whole bunch of leakage current in those electrolytics. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn it on and see that it's going to um, light up. Now, the person that sold this to me said the CRT is good. So it's, a, it's, it's for sure that we have a good CRT. Okay, we can measure the CRT ohms. In, in virtually all of these CRTs, the filament are the two pins that are adjacent to the um, alignment pin. So if we go in there and measure, we see we have continuity, so we have a good filament. Now, this is not the original tube that came in here. This is a P1, and it is a green tube. The original tube that came in here was a P4, which is the standard white tube like you see in the black and white set. P4 tubes like this are outrageously rare, and if you find one, you're going to pay money for it. You'll pay probably $250 for the tube itself. And then the TV set, you'll, be, you'll pay another three, four hundred for. Somebody's replaced the cheater cord. There used to be a cheater cord on it, but they've replaced this with a um, with a fixed line cord. Okay, we'll turn the power on. Okay, we're pulling half an amp. The filaments are lighting. Well, I see filaments there. I see filaments there. I don't see filaments in there. Okay, now let's see whether the high voltage. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to test the high voltage. We've got, we got filaments on our um, rectifier tubes. I've got one string of tubes right here that does not have filaments. There, there are four, four tubes here. It looks like this one, this one, and this string here have no filaments, 
and this one has no filaments. Now, uh, our horizontal output tube is lit. We can look and see if we have high voltage. Yeah. Okay, if you look. To tell if we have high voltage, you just take a screwdriver and you go near the output of the high voltage coil. See how we get the little arc? It's RF, so the capacitance of the screwdriver is what causes it to, to um, give a, uh, a little arc like that. So we've got the, the high voltage section working, but we do not have the sweep circuits and the video drivers and all of that stuff are not working. Okay, so what we have to do, it looks like we've got this string right here. This string right here is the string that's not working. This string here is working. So, um, all right, so what I have to do is, see, we could have a bad, um, bad tube in the bunch. I, I think the, the uh, CRT, yeah, the CRT, see, the CRT is not lighting up either. So, um, we've got a, um, an open in there somewhere. So, what I'm going to do first, shut the power off, and I'm going to take each of these tubes, and I'm going to check the filaments in them to make sure the filaments are good. Okay. To check the filaments, we know what the filaments are on these tubes. Okay. Alright, this is a okay, 12S N7. Should be 7 and 8, I'm pretty sure. Okay, it's good. I know it because I've done this so many times. I know what the pin numbers are. Uh, SN7s are on 7 and 8s. Okay, here we have another one. We look on seven and eight and we're good. Another one. We're good. 25Z6. Okay, that one there we know is working. It's 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 lit. Okay, we've got it. Okay. We know it's working because we have the high voltage. It feeds the power supply to the, um, whoo! Okay, um, the 100 microfarad filter capacitor is getting very hot. It, it's, it's not hot enough to where I can't hold my hand on it, but it will get there. So that one's going to have to be replaced. Okay, we have a bunch of little tubes. These are going to be pins 3 and 4. All of the tubes in here are common tubes. The only one that's not common is the CRT. The, all the rest of them are common tubes that are uh, uh, you know, maybe five dollars at the most. It's nothing like these old radio tubes that could be, um, be twenty, thirty, forty dollars. I'm going to say it's a pretty good chance all the tubes are good and there's a wiring problem that this guy did. Now this one got green corrosion on the pins so I might go find another one of those before we're done. Okay, all of the tubes are good. Okay, so what we have to do 
is trace through. Okay, let me get the main light back again. that to be about like that. Okay, I can't go too much more or it's going to um, hit that tube. I don't want to hit that tube. Okay, let me see if I can grab. Okay, if I grab that knob right there. I can hold. Okay, that'll hold. Okay, now we can follow through. I've got the ohmmeter right there. Four that goes on to there. That's weird. Okay. We get to there. Okay, we get to there. Okay. And then from here. Okay, I, I see a problem here. Okay, we, we get to this tube here. <coughs> Then we go through a resistor and it ends up on a pin and there's a capacitor to ground there. A lot of these a lot of these filaments have capacitors to ground, so that's there. But I don't see any other wire from there going anywhere. <laughs> okay, let me see what tube that is so that I can... Then 7 comes over here. And it gets onto this one. Okay, it's okay. They use this one pin as a tie point. So it will not have any connection to it. It's just, a, it's just an empty tie point. Okay, so we look from here. Okay, so this string here is what I just tested and it's all okay. Now, okay now, let's go and check. Okay, this string right here is not lighting up, so we want to see where that is. Okay, we've got... Okay, these are all 6SN7s, 12SN7s, so they're going to be 7 and 8. Okay, we go here. All right, 48 watts. Okay, ground. And to here. Aha! We've got no B+. Plus. We've got B-. minus. Yeah, pin. 3 and 5 on a 25Z6. Okay. 1, 2, 3. That ain't right. That ain't right. L6. Something, something is, is, something is screwy here. This is the Z6 right here. Go straight to one of the line. And it goes through this wire right here. It goes to a tube. It, it's clear that it does not match the um, 
It doesn't match the schematic. I'm balanced. Always helps to have an incorrect schematic. Ah. Okay, that's it. Wow. Okay, that at least lets us know what we're fighting. Not only do we have miswiring, but we have a schematic that doesn't match. Okay, I found a significant problem. What we have are these tube sockets are loosened with age. The, the, pin, the pin grabbers are loosened. So what I'm taking is a scribe and I'm bending these pins over to tighten them up. Just shove it down in there. Um, alongside the uh, pin and you bend over the contact so that it presses very firmly This can make more than just the filaments not work. Okay, there's three of them done. Okay, this one. I'm going to do them all because <clears throat> if they got loose contacts, that set is not going to work. They're just, all of these pins are just loose as can be. They're, they're not a very high quality socket. Ooh, 130 watts. Ooh, that's a lot higher. 85 watts, 81, 80, 77. Aha, the string of tubes is lighting up. Those are lighting up. Okay, all the tubes are lighting up. Okie dokie. <clears throat> 77 watts. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at this. We got sweep. Okay, the brightness works. Um, I don't know if there's even a focus on there. Okay. There it goes. Hey, we got a got 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 the. Okay, we got vertical. We got vertical and horizontal. It just takes time for the tubes to warm up. Okay, let me get around. Okay, here's the. Okay, we're at full brightness. We're probably scanning too high. We can't get there. Okay, on our vertical, we can only get to 46 hertz. Okay, so we've got a uh, problem with our vertical. Okay, here's what we're looking at on the scope. Okay, that's our vertical, vertical output going to the... Um, going to the deflection plate. Okay, and if we go over here to the horizontal, here's the horizontal. We can see that one is much better. Okay, see that's our horizontal. It's reading 15,750. And then our vertical we're reading 43, and that's all, it, all it'll do. It'll go lower, but we can't get higher. we got to get up to 60. Okay, so we've got a capacitor in here that's wrong, or a resistor, one or the other. So there's nothing wrong with the volt hold control, and all the resistors are correct. And it's all got brand new capacitors, nice orange drop capacitors. Okay, so we've got something else basically wrong here. This is the kind of problem that's really nasty. You have all the components good and brand new, and yet the frequency is off by 50%. It could be that the tube is weak. In a multivibrator, if the tube has low gain, the frequency will be lower than it should be. So what we'll do is we'll try a new tube in it.
and see if that fixes it. Okay, there's our vertical. It looks pretty nice and clean. We're reading 43.944. Okay, the fastest it'll go is 48 to 49. Okay, that's not even close to what we need. It needs to be up at 60. Okay, uh, going down, I mean, it goes way the heck down. I mean, a good grief goes down to 27, but we can't get up high enough. Now, looking at the circuit, we're going to have, okay, it's between these resistors here and this capacitor is what sets our ramp frequency in the multivibrator. So um, I've checked the resistors, they're correct. And that capacitor I haven't checked yet. Um, that looks like an original capacitor. It's that black one there. Um, I checked it for ohms wise and it comes out. It has no leakage. Okay, I'm going to pull it and measure it for value. It's possible that it's a little bit high in value. Uh, it's very unlikely. It's very, very unlikely. This is original. Now, it's not leaking. If it leaks, it'll make the frequency go higher. So, um, since we're lower, we clearly don't have leakage. If I look up here with a meter, I mean, it's way over 20 megs. Okay, I'm going to start up the capacitor checker. Okay, instead of 0.01, it's reading 0.012. So, it's about... Um, 20% high, uh, that doesn't account for the error. What I'm going to do, I'm going to find a 0082 and put it in there, and that should do the trick. It's a 75. This gives 0075. They're a little bit low. That should be okay, though. All right, let's solder it in and see what it does. Okay, we warm her up. Okay, we've got about a minute and a half or so to wait. Okay, and we go to the, the worst. Okay, that's the highest it goes. That's to 80, and the lowest it goes is 50. Okay, and we can set it right to 60. Okay, that gives us our, our vertical frequency right on the money. Okay, and a nice good ramp. Okay, you can see the mess we've got. <coughs> See, that does not look like the proper raster at all, okay? Now, the uh, horizontal size is right here. Okay, for one thing, I don't hear a thing coming out of the speaker. I hear nothing at all, whatsoever. I'm going to say we have a probably a burned out audio transformer. Um, we should get, when I turn this volume control, we should get a scratching noise out of the speaker. All right, let's just, that's an easy thing to work on. Let's look at that next. All right, let's see. Red and the blue there. Okay, the audio transformer is burned out. Okay. <clears throat> Typical. In old radios and TVs, one of the most common things to have wrong is burnt out audio transformers. And the reason for that is that the coupling capacitor, if you look at the coupling capacitor here, you have B plus over here, you got the grid here. So if that capacitor leaks, it turns that tube on hard. And what happens is the current through that tube goes to whatever the power supply can, can, you know, the tube saturates. And whatever the damn power supply can put out is now going through that winding. And it cooks it and burns it out. And it just comes from that capacitor, that coupling capacitor, going bad. Now he's already changed all the capacitors, so that's not the problem. The problem is that he didn't change the transformer. I can tell by looking at it, it's original. Okay.
See, that is original crap right there. Okay, we'll go get another one. Well, that was a great move. I pulled the stupid card out before the thing was finished writing on the camera. I lost the last sector of the video. Eh. Okay, there'll be some of it that isn't on there. Okay, the last sector that involved this transformer on the sound, open. So, replace that. We replace that. All it showed was taking it off, putting the new one on, and soldering it. Alright, let's turn it on and see if we get sound. Okay. Okay, very good. Alright. Put some signal in it. Nothing. I would expect if I was to touch my finger, usually when you touch the um, grid of the tube, you get a buzz, a little 60 cycle buzz. Try a signal generator. All right, we've got audio. We should hear a hissing noise. If the, if the IF strip was working, we would hear a hissing noise with this volume all the way up. But we don't. So the IF strip is dead. Okay, I will have to have a different signal generator. Uh, not that one. Let's go to this one up here. Okay. Okay, set this to FM. Point seven megahertz, and we have FM and one kilohertz. Okay. And to that input, a few picofarads right here. Nothing. Nothing. And I'm sure we, let me get the scope going and we'll see if we got signal. I'm sure we do. We're not seeing anything coming through the ratio detector at all. Nothing. Then we should have, ah, oh, no wonder. <laughs> oh, good move, good move. And I hooked the generator to the wrong connector. Okay, let's see what happens when I hook it to the right one. Still not going to work, I predict. Absolutely zilch! Alright, we definitely have got signal on the plate. Okay, and if I... Okay. See, so right now I'm looking on the plate. And that's what we're getting on the plate. <clears throat> okay. This one here is the grid. Little itty bitty signal. And we go to the plate. Big signal. So the driver is giving plenty of gain. Okay, now we want to look on the. Um... All right, we did a little bit more poking around. And um, we've got. Got the audio working. We had a the capacitor in the um, ratio detector here. We had one um, discriminator, whatever, uh, two microfarad capacitor. It was it was uh, for all practical purposes nothing but a resistor. Okay, we replaced that with a nice new capacitor, and that uh, fixed it. Okay, we don't get any noise. Okay, I'm gonna turn the power on. If it's working correctly, we should get noise out of the speaker. We would hear the hissing. The, it'll make a hissing noise in the speaker if all the amplifiers are working. So there's something still not correct in the, um, in the IF strip. From the grid, I mean it's just picking it up out of the air. It's so sensitive. We're going to be going into the video section. We have to go with 45 megahertz. Okay, I'm going to set the generator higher. High band. And 45 megahertz. 
me see if that's doing something. <coughs> Okay, that takes care of that. Mentioned in one of the repairs, they said you cannot get the set working with a missing high voltage cage. You have to put some kind of shield between that coil and everything else. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make up the replacement cage. Now, here's something that I discovered online. Um, notice that when I got this thing, the cover for the um, power supply was missing. The uh, high voltage power supply is supposed to have a box covering it. And um, I didn't realize that that was a serious problem until I checked online and somebody said, yeah, that's a very serious problem. Okay, here is without the cover. Look at how <laughs> the raster turns to shit. Now when I put the cover on there that shields it, but do it without getting shocked. Look how that completely cleans the raster up. So now the raster looks beautiful. But now we have a perfectly clean raster. And um, so we have to have that cover in order to uh, work. Okay, now the next thing I'm doing right now is I'm aligning the IF strip. I've got the frequencies here that we set these coils to. So we put an input on the input of the IF and then a generator to that frequency and then we peak it up at that frequency. Then we go to the next frequency, adjust coil 2, 3, and 4, right on down the line. Okay, so if I look at it on the scope, we have our signal there and uh, we'll put the input. Okay, and as I adjust it, I'm set at 25.6, which is the first one. Alright, that's a maximum. Alright, the next one, coil 2, is 22 megahertz. Okay, I go down in frequency. 22 even, that's 3, 2, 1, 22. All right, at 22, and I cut the input. Okay, now, I have 2. All right, we peak that one. All right, next, I'm going to set it to 21.6. Okay, and then... I have three, we peak there. Ooh. Well, that one was way off. Okay, next we go to the fourth, it's 24.8. Okay, 21, two, Three so signal. Okay, and then the I F Alright, and there it is. Okay. It looks pretty good, actually. It's pretty flat. Okay, next thing we got to do is get the signal going in through the tuner. Okay, I'm going to set the signal to um, about 70 megahertz. There's 72 megahertz, which is somewhere around channel 2, I think. Okay, um, and I'll take the generator and go to the input. Okay, we're going to line the tuner 
Okay, the first thing you do when you're lining the tuner, you engage the tuning condenser all the way. In other words, the plates are completely in, uh, meshed. Okay, we've got that. Then you adjust S1 to get a frequency of 80 megahertz. Okay, this is S1 right here. Right now we're reading 72 megahertz, so I have to come out. It may be a brass slug, it may have to go in. This screwdriver is not suitable. Okay, 73. Okay, that's 80. Okay, now, then disengage it and go for 110. All right, so we turn the capacitor in the other direction. Okay, 109.9, .9. okay, that's close enough. Okay, so that takes care of the alignment of the oscillator. Okay, now, I want to put a signal into the input from the generator. I'm going to put in a channel 2, at channel 6, it's a 56 megahertz. Okay. Um, we've got the signal going all the way through from the tuner to the uh, video output. Um, we're feeding a, um, a uh, color bar generator into it. Uh, it's a black and white on this, of course. Um, Alright, what we had wrong is this tube socket first IF had the plate pin, no, the grid pin. The grid pin was not making contact. It was dirty. So by taking a scribe down in the hole and tightening up the uh, pin, that got that. Now that got it toward the IF. Uh, went all the way through. Okay, then we were not getting anything out of the mixer at all. <clears throat> and we found What they had done is, is, is the, whoever did this, <clears throat> they show a wire going from this coil here to the cathode. Well, they had it connected, the cathode was connected over here to the grid instead of to the coil. So we had an effect, the coil through a 10K resistor to the cathode. Now, with a 10K resistor in the cathode, this tube was unable to function. So, um, we moved that wire back over to the correct place, and the uh, mixer started working. So, now we've got a uh, signal going all the way through, <coughs> from the tuner all the way to the, uh, to, the, um, to the video. If I turn this around, okay, we've, got our, um, we've got our signal on the... Uh, on the tube itself, okay? That's the, uh, we're using the vertical bars right now. Okay. All right, the next thing I'm going to do, i got to get a um, converter box and get it modified to where we can um, take a DTV signal and get it output on a channel this thing tunes. Okay. I've got the um, converter box hooked up, and we've got video. That's the uh, input to the video amplifier. Okay, so we've got video all the way up <coughs> to there. Now, um, we don't have any picture, so we've got sound. The sound is working. So the video amplifier is not working. That's the uh, output of the video amplifier, and we've got voltage. Okay. So we have to see how that gets into the tube. This is the grid. 
No, the, the cathode, I mean. The grid is at a fixed point. We're not getting anything at all on the tube. I mean, that is the most perfect signal you could ask for. Okay, so there's definitely something not kosher with the picture too. I'm not getting anything on the screen, yet we've got very good video. <clears throat> okay. Now that's on the um, that's on the plate of the video amplifier that goes straight to the cathode of the uh, CRT. Okay, we're using um, this box here. It generates uh, bars and uh, dots and cross hatches and stuff as our signal. Until we can get this to show up on the picture tube, we're out of luck. I mean, this this is this is there. There's nothing on the screen right now at all. It's just a plain raster. Okay, so something is um, screwed <coughs> in getting to the picture tube. Well, that is really a fine. How do you do? 15 volts should be enough to very much modulate that picture tube. Oh boy! <laughs> well... Okay. Now, let's see. We've got the bottom finished. Here, we we're missing that all together, so I had to use just a piece of plywood for that. Okay, so we have to put that onto the chassis first. Okay, that goes like this. I lose more tools that way, but I'll take care of it tomorrow. I'll go to the hardware store. on backwards. I put the damn thing on backwards. It only goes one way because there's screw holes here for the front bezel. Okay, now I can see this one's coming unsoldered. <coughs> Whoever worked on this thing before did something really good. They took the nuts and they soldered them to the tabs so that they wouldn't screw loose. Look at that. Look at that. There were two of them in there. Two. <laughs> Amazing. <clears throat> Some kind of telepathic power there. The likelihood of having two perfect pieces of metal is just, you know, God, I mean, it's just one chance in 20 million billion. Now, yeah, that is on there. This cannot be the way it was. I don't see anywhere else in the cabinet for that to go. There's not any other cutout. But if it's sitting there like that, it's, it's just definitely interfering with the um, controls. And, oh, got it! <laughs> Look at the damn thing! Cat brought it in. <laughs> All right, let me take him outside. He'll live. And my kitty constantly brings me little gifts. Sometimes it's big, big brown roaches. Don't like that. Sometimes it's the green lizards. They're not bad. They, 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 they sometimes pretty hard to catch them. A lot of times I'll find the lizards dried up somewhere. <laughs> I haven't caught them and got them back outside. I, I just take them and put them back outside. Alright, so I have to do a little bit of 
a little bit of grinding work. Okay. I'm going to be out there with you in a minute. It's time to go sit on the front porch with the kitty. So she wants me to drop everything and go sit on the front porch. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay. Okay, that takes care of our antenna input. I guess it doesn't really interfere with it too awfully bad. Well, the darn cover actually fits. I mean, I marked the place. I, I just marked that within an eighth of an inch. And it, it's just right there. <laughs> she wants me to come sit out on the porch with her. Okay, baby. It's time to quit for today. Yes, say goodbye. Say goodbye. <laughs> She's such a pretty kitty. Okay, that's it. Okay. We got some screws. Okay, now, that gets the entire cabinet and stuff done. Okay, we've got knobs. Damn. Okay, that's it. Okay, now we got a little bit of work to do on the front. I'm going to polish this up and polish up the cabinet and that's going to finish it. Then we'll turn it on and we'll show it working and that's going to be it. It's, it's you know, this is a, a homemade bezel. Um, the, the plastic one that was on there was missing. You know, the bottom the bottom board was missing and the, um, the uh, plastic one was missing, the uh, plastic front. But there's nothing you can do about that. You either have it or you don't. I don't. Okay. Next we will operate the set. Well, I managed to get a picture on it. Um, during the handling of the TV, the um, picture tube twisted about a 10 degree angle there. I had to pull the whole case off to get in there to um, turn it. And then the um, I don't have an outside antenna for my converter box, so the signal is weak. It says weak signal. But I did manage to get a picture and um, That's going to be it for this TV for right now. Um, main thing was just to get it to where it was working. Um, it's not something to watch. It's just a, a project. 
All right, that's it for this TV.